स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Let me now move over to uh, one more notion of uh, compactness. Yet again, we will work on general metric spaces. So let X D be a metric space. To define the notion of compactness, we will have to first define what is meant by an open cover. So let uh, script u. Maybe I should write. Be a little bit more careful. Script u be a collection of open sets in capital X. We say that a subset K contained in X is compact. oh sorry we say that okay we'll be careful compactness comes later we say that u is an open cover of a subset k if k is contained in the union of all the open sets in this collection is contained in the union of all the sets u where u belongs to the script u if this is getting satisfied we say that script u is an open cover once we have the notion of uh, what is meant by an open cover very succinctly if we have to describe compactness it says that k every uh, k is compact if every open cover of k has a finite sub cover let me write that down we say that we say that a uh, subset k of the compact of the metric space x is compact if for every open cover u of k there exists finitely many elements u1 u2 up to un in script u such that k is contained in the union of k from 1 to n of uk so that means you start with any arbitrary uh cover u it doesn't matter what that cover is you will always be able to get hold of a sub collection which is finite and so that case contained in the union let me give some very simple examples uh one of the first example would be that all finite sets are all finite subsets of a metric space that will necessarily be a compact set a finite subset of a metric space is compact empty set is compact Uh, another notion would be that you take a sequence of points x and converging to x let xn be a sequence of points converging to x or maybe x not then the set a which is uh, the set of all xn where n is in n if you have not put zero in n let me just add it this is compact this is something which you should sit down and check 
in capital letters. Okay, some properties of compact sets. In a metric space, a compact set is always closed. Let me just write it down as a proposition. In a metric space, a compact set is closed. Let us give a quick proof of this statement. We will prove that it is a complement, a complement of our given compact set is open. Okay, so let A contained in X be compact and X0 be in X minus K, the complement of uh, K. Define, <coughs> define B subscript N to be all those points in capital X such that the distance, so B is the distance on X, the distance of X to X naught is less than 1 by N, less than or equal to 1 by N. So, these are closed balls of uh, radius 1 by N around X naught and we will define U, let U this be the collection of all x uh, un, let me call it un, un where un is equal to x minus bn. So, notice that bn is closed because they are closed balls, therefore x minus bn is open and therefore un is open. So, u is a collection of open sets. And let us see what is there in the union or rather let us see what is not there in the union then x minus the union of un. This is uh, by De Morgan's law, this is the intersection of x minus un, right. So, the n is from 1 to infinity and x minus un is precisely bn because un is defined as x minus bn, right. So, this is equal to the intersection of bn, but what was bn to begin with? bn were, all the bns were closed balls of radius 1 by n and you should check that if you look at the intersection, this is just going to be the point x0. So, the only point which is not in the union of un is x0, but x0 does not belong to k, right? That is how we started off, does not belong to k and that implies that k is contained in the union of un, where n is going from 1 to infinity because x0 is the only point which is not in the union of u and x0 anyway does not belong to k. So, k is a subset of this. This tells us that u is an open cover. The script u is an open cover of k and that tells us that there is a finite sub cover hence there is an n that x is n in n such that a is contained in u1 union up to un. We do not need beyond n, that is what this says. So, let us pick m to be uh, greater than n, that would mean that 1 by m is less than 1 by n, right? I will allow you to sit down and check again, check that the ball of radius. 1 by m, this is contained in B m, right? The closed ball, this is certainly contained in this. This intersected with the, this is easy. So, check that this intersected with uh, union of u n, oh, I should not have used n everywhere. Let me call this n 0. So, there is this n 0 and this is n going from 1 to n 0. This is empty, but k is contained in this which tells us that b x 0 1 by m is contained in x minus k and therefore, you take any point in the complement of k that has to be necessarily an interior point and hence x minus k is open, hence x minus k is open and that is an alternate way of saying that k is closed. 
therefore we are always having uh, a compact set as being a closed set in a metric space so that's something which you should always keep in mind so from now because of this okay i'll also give one more exercise here this is uh, a good exercise for you to sit and work with open covers it's not difficult it's not straightforward either but it's not difficult the exercise is to show that if you take any closed subset of a compact uh, if, uh, if you take a closed subset of a compact set it should also be a compact set a closed subset of a compact set is closed so because compact sets are closed we don't need to mention whether it is closed in the compact set or whether it is closed in the ambient metric space. When we say it is closed, we mean that it will mean that it is closed in both. Okay, so you should sit down and solve this uh, exercise. And once we have solved this, my, the remark I am making right now is that it now doesn't matter whether we prove results on compact subsets of a metric space or on a compact metric space itself. So from now on, we will just assume that to talk about results on uh, compact subsets, we will assume that the metric space itself is compact, should necessarily have a limit point. So let x be a metric space, we say that x is limit point compact if any, if every infinite subset of x has a limit point. If this condition is satisfied by every subset uh, of uh, infinite cardinality, then we say that x is limit point compact. The proposition. Let's start with uh, a metric space which is compact. Let x be a compact metric space. A uh, compact metric space is always limit point compact, then x is limit point compact. We have to prove that if we take a infinite subset of x, then it should necessarily have a limit point. Well, let's try proving that here. Yeah. Let a be. Uh, an infinite subset of x. We will prove by contradiction, we will prove the theorem by proposition by contradiction. Suppose A is, A does not have a limit point. If that is the case, The first observation is that uh, if it does not have any limit point, then by default vacuously it contains all its limit points and hence A is closed, A is closed in X because it contains all its limit points, uh, all its limit points which are none by the way. And because X, uh, A is closed, this implies that X minus A, the complement of A is open. Okay, that's one observation and the fact that A does not have uh, a limit point means that given X in capital A, we can get hold of a neighborhood that X is a neighborhood UX of capital A such that UX intersects with uh, A in just one point, UX intersects with A in just one point X. If we are not able to get hold of any such neighborhood, that means that X is a limit point of A, right? So the fact that X is not a limit, the fact that A does not contain any limit point means that X is not a limit point of A and therefore that X is one such neighborhood, UX. Let's now define a collection of open sets. This collection of open sets to be all the UX where X is in capital A union the set x minus a and uh, it will be immediate to check that then u is 
an open cover of x so we have now an open cover of x which is a compact metric space remember that we started off with x being compact and because it's an open cover of x of of an open of a compact metric space there x is a finite sub cover there x there x is finitely many elements in u such that x is contained in the union and because x is the metric space it will be equal to the union and since x is compact let me write that down write that down x is compact there exists x1 to xn in capital a such that x is contained in and the containment here is basically equality because x is the ambient metric space to begin with this is equal to ux1 union ux2 union up to uxn and maybe x minus a as well if x minus a is not needed it's just uh, redundant and we can throw it out but nevertheless we can just say that that x is finitely many x i s which satisfy this then if you notice a intersected with uh, u x i is equal to just the point x i tells us that there are only finitely many x i s isn't it because x is the union here a and a does not intersect with uh, the complement of a this implies that a is a finite set because there are only finitely many sets which whose union is giving us capital x a is hence now a finite set which is which is a contradiction right we started off with a which is an infinite set so our assumption has to be false hence there exists a limit point of a and that's precisely what uh, we wanted if you if you have if you start off with a compact metric space every infinite subset of that uh, metric space will necessarily have a limit point and therefore x is limit point compact we'll define one more notion of compactness which is actually equivalent in the setting of a metric space and this is of sequentially compact so we say that a metric space is sequentially compact is sequentially compact if every sequence in the metric space has a convergent subsequence let me write that down and uh, then we will describe what it says every sequence has a convergent subsequence if you start off with a sequence xn in uh, this particular metric space then you can get hold of n1 less than n2 less than n3 and so on such that xnk converges to some point x0 in capital x so this is uh, uh, called a, a metric space which satisfies this condition is called sequentially compact and the next proposition tells us that limit point compactness implies sequential compactness so let me write that down let x be a, a metric space if x is limit point compact then x is sequentially compact so what do we have to do to prove this we have to prove that every sequence will have a convergent subsequence so let's start off with a sequence xn let xn be a sequence in capital x we will collect all the elements which feature in the sequence in a set let's call that a and a the this collection of all the elements xn rn belongs to natural numbers so now there are two cases either a is a finite set or a is an infinite set if 
a is finite then the situation is quite straightforward if a is finite that means that there is some element in the sequence which is getting repeated infinitely many times there exist n k k in n such that x n k is equal to some x naught in capital x and if you take this particular subsequence n k such that n k is less than n k plus 1. So, if you get hold of such a subsequence then limit k going to infinity of x and k is equal to x naught and we have a convergent subsequence. So, the case when a is finite is quite straightforward. We will have to work a little more when a is infinite and that is when the lim that is where the limit point compactness will start coming into the picture. Suppose a is finite. No, sorry, suppose a is infinite, then by limit point compactness, a has a limit point. Then a has a limit point, and let us say the limit point is x naught. Let us now get hold of a subsequence of xn which converges to x naught. That is the claim. The claim is that there is now a subsequence of uh, x n which converges to x naught. To do that, let n 1 in natural numbers be such that x n 1 belongs to b x naught comma 1. So, you pick one element in A which is in the ball of radius 1 around x naught. And then we will construct the sequence inductively. Let n 2 greater than n 1 be such that x n 2 belongs to b x naught comma 1 by 2. So, the first question you should be asking is why is there uh, one such n 2. I will give you a, a reason orally you should uh, write that down explicitly. Suppose there does not exist uh, an n 2 greater than n 1 such that x n 2 belongs to b x 0 half. The, this means that uh, the distance of x k to x naught is greater than half for all k greater than n 1. And uh, let delta be the minimum of the distance of x naught to x n 1, uh, x 1, distance of x naught to x 2, distance of x naught to x n 1 and half. You take the minimum of all this, so call it delta. And my claim is that the ball of uh, radius delta by 2 around x naught for example does not have any element in A and uh, this other than x naught maybe x naught was already an element in A to begin with. But, but this will now tell us that x naught is not a limit point which is a contradiction. So, there should necessarily be one such n 2 greater than n 1 which belongs to the ball of radius half around x naught and construct x and k inductively. I e a let n k be greater than n k minus 1 such that x n k belongs to b x n k oh sorry b x naught comma 1 by k and this x n k converges to x naught and therefore we have now a convergent subsequence x n k is a convergent subsequence. Hence, we started off with an arbitrary sequence and we have proved that it should necessarily have a convergent subsequence. Therefore, x is sequentially compact. What have we proved till now? We have proved that you start with a compact matrix space, it should necessarily be limit point compact, you start off with a limit point compact metric space, it should necessarily be sequentially compact. The cycle of ideas will be complete if we show that uh, any metric space which is sequentially compact is necessarily a compact metric space. So, let us complete that uh, set of ideas, but before that we need a tool or a theorem which is called the 
Lebesgue number lemma. Let me write that down. The Lebesgue number lemma tells that if you take any sequentially compact metric space, there is some epsilon such so that for every x, if you look at bx, uh, given a open cover, there x is an epsilon such so that for every x, the ball of radius epsilon around x is going to be contained in some element in the open cover. I will write that down and uh, we will prove that as well. This is called the Lebesgue number lemma. Let x be sequentially compact. So it is a metric space which is sequentially compact. I am talking about sequentially compact that means that x is a metric space that is why I did not write x to be a metric space explicitly but yeah this is exciting. And u be an open cover of x itself. That means x is contained in the union of all elements in capital U, but because uh, script U, but because script U contains open sets in capital X, the union will be contained in capital X and therefore here the fact that U is an open cover of X manifests in uh, the form of X being equal to the union of all elements in the script U. All right, so let uh, U be uh, an open cover of X. The Lebesgue number lemma says that then there exists epsilon positive or let us call it delta. Epsilons will keep coming. So, let us call it delta positive such that for x in capital X there exists u in the script u such that the x epsilon is contained in u. Oh, the x delta is contained in u. So, this delta does not depend on x, it depends on the open cover u, but it does not depend on x. So, for any uh, x in capital X, there will be some element in the open cover such that the ball of uh, radius delta around x will be contained in u. So, this is what the Lebesgue number, Lebesgue number lemma says. Let us give a proof of this. The proof is by contradiction. Suppose we do not have one such delta. So, suppose there does not exist uh, a delta positive as above. What does that mean? That means that given any n, if you look at any 1 by n, there is a corresponding x or x subscript n such that ball of radius. Uh, 1 by n around x n is not contained in any element in capital U, in script U. Let me just write that. Then for every n in natural numbers, there exists some point x n in capital X such that the x n comma 1 by n is not contained in in any element of script u. That is precisely what it says, what it means when we say that that does not exist any such delta. Okay, but what do we know about our uh, metric space? Our metric space is sequentially compact. Since x is sequentially compact, we have a convergent subsequence, right? There x is a subsequence x n k converging to some point x naught in capital X. Now, x naught is in capital X implies that there exists some epsilon positive such that B x naught epsilon is contained in u for some u in the script u. Why is this the case? This is because script u is a cover. Because script u is a cover, capital X is equal to the union of elements in script u. And x naught is a point in capital X means that x naught belongs to the union of all elements in script u. And therefore, it belongs to some element in script u. Let us call that element capital U. But u is an open set now. 
and x0 is an interior point. So, that is some epsilon positive such that the x0 epsilon is contained in our uh, open set U. Okay. Now, we are almost done. Let us pick nk large enough so that the distance of so that 1 by nk is less than epsilon by 2 and the distance of uh, x n k to x naught is also less than epsilon by 2. I will leave it as an exercise for you to check using the triangle inequality this particular claim. The ball of radius x n k 1 by n k is hence contained in u. So, let me just write as that proof by triangle inequality. It is a straightforward observation. And uh, this claim, if, this, if it is established, is a contradiction. It is a contradiction to which, which uh, assumption? It is a contradiction since we had assumed that how did we pick all these n k's or how did we pick all these n's? the xn's will not be contained in any element of script u that is how we had picked our xn right so this is contradicting the assumption it's a contradiction to the assumption that the xn 1 by n is not contained in any element of script u. So, that means that this particular assumption has to be wrong, right? Because if we are starting off with this assumption, we are ending up with some kind of a contradiction. And therefore, there exists a delta positive Hence, there exists delta positive satisfying the conditions in the proposition, in the lemma. Okay, so Lebeck number lemma, even though it is being called a lemma, it just uh, captures something substantial. It says that if you have a sequentially compact metric space and if you have some open cover of the metric space, then there is some delta or some small number such that you take any uh, set of diameter less than that number, it will be contained in one of the uh, elements in the collection. Okay, so uh, this is going to be used to prove that every sequentially compact metric space is a compact metric space. So, let us state it, prove it and finish or complete the circle of ideas. So, let x be sequentially compact then x is a compact matrix space. Once we establish this theorem, what we have finally proved is that a compact metric space should necessarily be limit point compact, a limit point compact metric space should be necessarily sequentially compact and a sequentially compact metric space should necessarily be a compact metric space. So, these three notions are equivalent in a metric space. Let us give a proof of this theorem. The first observation in proving this theorem is that the following claim given epsilon positive there exist finitely many points x1 to xn such that x is equal to bx1 epsilon union bx2 epsilon up to bxn epsilon so given any epsilon, we will be always able to get hold of finitely many such points. The proof is by contradiction, proof of claim.
suppose that it doesn't happen for some epsilon as a proof by contradiction. Suppose epsilon positive is such that is such that what will be the negation there does not exist finitely many points such that x is equal to the x1 epsilon union up to the xn epsilon that does not exist this is the negation right if there is one such epsilon, we will arrive at some kind of a contradiction. The co contradiction is basically as follows. Pick x1 in capital X. Inductively, pick xn plus 1 not in the union of the epsilon balls around x1 to xn. Remember that there will always be one such element because if there is no such element at some point that means that there are finitely many balls whose union epsilon balls union of those epsilon balls will be equal to x. So that will be a contradiction already right. We have picked epsilon so that that does not happen. So there is always going to be one such xn plus 1 and consider the sequence xn. But what is our assumption? Our assumption is that capital X is sequentially compact. Let me write it in shorthand form. It will be sequentially compact. And hence, there exists a subsequence which converges. But what do we know about convergent uh, subsequences? We know that convergent subsequences are Cauchy. But can a subsequence here be Cauchy ever? It will not be. However, distance of x j x k is always going to be greater than epsilon. Since we have picked the points in such a manner and hence no subsequence can be Cauchy. Which means that we do not have a convergent subsequence, right? Or it is a contradiction to the fact that, uh, to the claim that there is a convergent subsequence, which contradicts, which is a contradiction. Let me just leave it at that. And therefore, our assumption has to be false. Hence, there exists epsilon positive such that x, there exists finitely many points. x1 to xn such that x is equal to the x1 epsilon union up to the xn epsilon. This particular notion is sometimes also called as the called as total boundedness, but let us not get caught up in jargons. This is a claim which we have established for metric spaces which are sequentially compact. Now let us finish the proof by proving that it is now necessarily going to be compact. To prove that it is compact, let u be an open cover of capital X. And by Lebesgue number lemma, we know that there is an epsilon because it is sequentially compact by Lebesgue number lemma, there exists a delta positive such that B x delta is contained in U for some U in script U and which depends on x, right. So, let me be a bit more precise such that given epsilon positive b x delta is contained in u for some u in script u. But given delta positive there exists finitely many points by above clay.
so that b x 1 delta union up to b x n delta is equal to our matrix space capital X. So, let us do one thing, let us call this u x for some u x in capital X is what that will uh, help us identify these uh, open sets. Then u x 1 this left hand side is contained in u x 1 union up to u x n which now this contains b x 1 delta union up to b x n delta, but that is precisely equal to capital X which means that there exists a fine, the finite sub cover, uh, I do not want to use that word here. So, let me say that n x is just directly, let me write it down, x is compact. So, we started off with, this is because we started off with an arbitrary uh, open cover, where was it? Huh? Let u be some arbitrary open cover, we managed to get hold of finitely many elements in the open cover such that it is union is equal to the given compact set, given set x and therefore x is compact. Yeah. So, the, with this we complete a circle of ideas. So, from now on when because our uh, complex plane is a uh, metric space with respect to the metric we have defined, these notions coincide in our complex plane and we will freely be using these notions interchangeably. Okay, let me stop here.